pro, whereas a lot of people would consider that to be a con. Um, things like um, the, the increased uh, quality of accommodations for borders, that's not necessarily a given. Um, there's all sorts of arguments that if you have much more regulation, people are going to avoid those regulations, and, and that's actually going to lead to lower quality accommodation because borders will be much uh, less likely to report any problems if they're breaking the existing regulations. Um, and one other I had was things like um, parking. Uh, for example, um, sorry, I've lost my place in my notes. Parking? Um, yeah, parking was listed as a, a, a big pro in an option two, I believe. Um, whereas there's a lot of arguments that would suggest that requiring houses to have parking is actually a con because it um, distorts the market for parking prices, it reduces the incentive for, for people to you know, walk and bike to work and all those different kinds of things like that. So I, I, before we get into any specifics, I just want to point it out that really when you're doing a cost benefit analysis, it should be very objective, not have any sort of subjective biases built into those things. So thanks. As we all know, the city of Regina has experienced immense growth over the past several years. That means a lot of young people are coming here for schooling, a lot of young people are coming here to work, and many of them are coming from our rural communities. And I know everybody in this room has a relative or has a friend or has some acquaintance who comes from rural Saskatchewan and knows full well that those people, and, and myself included, I come from the small town of Indian Head, have come to Regina to work. Now the point that I want to make, and I, I think if we could really focus on this key point, the issues that have been brought up, parking, noise, conflict, uh, the possible resource waste, uh, possible the, the waste of resources because of additional people in a household, all of those could be addressed by strengthening current bylaws that are on the books. And I think Everybody in this church has a stake in that argument, and I think all of those things could be addressed. We have excellent city officials up here who could begin work on that, and we could cease this argument between those of us who do not own properties currently, and I, I myself am one of them, I board with one other gentleman who's a good close acquaintance of mine. We only have two people to the household. We've never had any issues whatsoever. We could eliminate that antagonism by simply focusing on those renters, just as they are common in other households. They live there with a blood relative who may be causing noise issues, who may have an excessive number of vehicles on the street. You name it, those issues could be addressed. Now, the definition of a bad law is a law that is unenforceable, and that's what we currently have. It is unenforceable. We require people to report other people who are already causing a disturbance. That's what we need to focus on. And I think if we focus on those bylaws and strengthening those bylaws, the Calgary option and option number one Perfectly, perfectly viable. Reactive enforcement, public education, and displacing renters, long-term renters, who, by the way, and I fully intend to rank myself in this category, long-term renters who intend to become property owners in the city of Regina and contributed to this tax base and make this city even better than it has ever been, that is a cost that this city will have to bear. And I encourage you all to ignore that cost. I encourage all of you to keep your taxes low. I encourage you to accept young people from rural Saskatchewan from all across this country who are moving to the city to find new opportunities, to allow them the opportunity to rent, and focus on those individuals, and make no mistake, they are individuals. Focus on those individuals who are causing the problem in the first place. Thank you very much.
a rooming house or landlord. All of my neighbors have had good property sales when it has suited them. So whatever myth you're going on, that you can't have a neighbor that's of difference, in other words, somebody's paying for their part of the rooming house or whatever, does not affect property values unto itself. Now, if you have a crack house next door to you, I would say you've got a problem. But it's not the people who are paying rent, it's the activity that was going on there. And either that landlord or the police should get into enforcing the laws that are there. In terms of what we see here, the only option that looks halfway decent to me is option one, and it certainly doesn't go far enough in striking stuff away. Also, I wonder why if there's less work and reduced conflict complexities, there's no saving in the city, and why haven't we had a tax decrease because of that? I only see tax increases. What's wrong? We've got crazy laws coming in, crazy projects. We don't need that stuff. How can we ensure if you do any of this stuff that there is enough transparency that we can check that this is not some sort of action that is done maliciously? You talk about option three, zoning. Well, council will just put in uh, an exception to zoning, or they'll change it. Now you'll have the same properties you want. I talked of an incident that happened to me about eight years ago where the manager of property bylaws, Ron Pitchko, solicited in the transition area community session deputies who would go out and generate complaints so the bylaw officers could then come down and inflict upon rental properties. We never got to know who those people were, and when we asked about what was the real complaint, it would not come in. This gentleman has never done anything that I could criticize on, but in the past, we've never had the transparency for the city. How do we get that transparency to know that it's a legitimate complaint, who's complaining, and we can fix the complaint, not some crazy bylaw infraction that they then come in and inspect it for and pulled out of the hat. Okay, thanks. Uh, is that, see, do you have a question? Would you like to I just hear ask, comment? how can we get transparency into the city? When you pay your $25, you get these documents with everything blacked out, and you don't know who makes the complaint, what the complaint is. The law is a farce when you get down to enforcing it. I had a man who did a garden of herbs, which was then told to be cultivated because the city didn't like what I was growing in my front yard. And he'd spent hours in that garden, but it was unusual. The alfalfa lady on Retallic, it took her years to have the right to have an alfalfa lawn rather than, but it was supposed to be complaints, and we couldn't find out. Okay. Show us how. Okay, thanks Wayne. I'm, uh, I'm going to ask Lauren to speak to that uh, question about transparency and bylaws.
moved into my house, and apparently that's the problem. Because they sent me a letter that said I should pay a $10,000 fine. So, where is the transparency on that fee? Option number two, sir. Is, 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 is that actually a question, or is that... Yeah, we'll take that as a question. Where is the transparency? I would like to see what the actual complaint of my property was. I would like to see who actually made that complaint on my property, and who made the action to resolve that. Now, the only thing I can assume is the fact that my house has more than me and my wife living there now, so that must be the complaint. They never said it was garbage, they never said it was parking, they never said it was an unkempt wall, they never said it was this or that. So what am I to assume? What I'd suggest, actually, because your case is very specific, that perhaps once we hear your remaining comments or questions, then I would ask Warren to take his side and... Yeah, we'll call it Dr. Warren. I'd like to call him. I'll 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 call him.
and that actually creates more capacity. This was identified by the city of Virginia administration in that comprehensive public strategy. There was a complaint from a small group who came and pushed it on our ground, the council who made the motion at City Hall uh, that we need to remove, remove strategy 15 from the comprehensive strategy. And that is going to cut supply, and that will have negative, negative effects on the rental market in the namely costs. And as costs increase since 2005, you can ask our market outreach, people requesting their services has gone up or old. So you will find people on the street, in the parks, trying to survive in. Okay, okay I, 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 are you, I was giving you a two minute warning. Um, in keeping with our, with our, in a two minute warning now in terms of, uh, 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 how many times is 10 grand by Sure, how to word it, so you'll have to bear with me if I'm a little bit awkward. 
It seems to me that if the concern is the conduct of the tenants uh, with regard to, you know, the sort of conduct and, and you know, vandalism of the property and all that kind of thing, people are so worried about. Uh, why are we targeting the conduct of the landlords? Is, is this not a, a case where we are trying to uh, assign guilt by association? First of all, as a tenant, I must say, I am deeply offended that people assume that merely because I don't own property that I have a higher risk to offend the neighbor. That, that, that is a, a hugely discriminatory position to take. But besides that, if I work in a house with two, four, ten, fifteen people living there, should we not be holding those individual people accountable for their individual conduct? Suppose I'm the, the only one with 14 others who are misbehaving. It, is it not the other part of people's responsibility? And why is it the landlord's responsibility? If we establish a licensing system like what is being proposed here, does that not create a, a situation where we are now able to create charges against people who have not actually committed any violation at all, merely on the grounds that they're creating some sort of violent Yes. <laughs> a several part question. Um, I'll let you respond to whichever part you like, but I'd like to draw <laughs> specific attention to the problem of holding people accountable for other people's sins. Because we had a huge show of capacity. Thank you. 